so welcome everyone uh, to our this week uh, circular coffee conversation with myself Sophie and Erica. Um, so this initiative really came to life during the lockdown when we had to stop the events. We really wanted to keep that com our community around the circular economy in Reading live and growing it basically through looking at what local businesses, but also some in a wider spectrum in the UK are doing around the circular economy. And at the moment, we've got to focus on food, drink and packaging. And today we are being joined by Anne-Marie and Ayo. So I will let Erica more in details after. <laughs> um, but we're really going to talk about community um, as well as what the council can uh, is doing and helping us in that. So the way that it works, Erica will start chatting with Anne-Marie and Ayo for the next 15 minutes or so, and then we will have about 10 minutes um, to, for you to ask any questions that you've got uh, to them both. So throughout the conversation, make sure that you log them in into the chat. Um, and yes, that's it. I will hand over to Erica. Thank you, Sophie, and nice to see everyone here. Welcome back. Um, as Sophie said, we're chatting to two of the co-founders of Plastic Free Cavisham, which is also a Surfers Against Sewage initiative and a national kind of uh, NGO charity as well, Anne Milly and Ayo. Anne Milly runs Friendly Pony Home, a local um, eco lifestyle kind of uh, store within Cavisham and also champions a lot of other kind of eco, plastic free, sustainable businesses as well. And Ayo is actually um, a local Labour and Cooperative uh, Council for Cavisham as well as being a civil environmental engineer as well. So I think we're going to have a really exciting and interesting conversation. First of all, we always asked our guests to bring a circular conversation starter. Uh, so I've not seen these properly as well, a little sneak peek. So maybe I'll first ask Ayo, can you share what circular conversation starter you brought today? Okay, so I brought a bit, a bit of a beautiful retro fashion. <laughs> I've got this gorgeous jumpsuit here and I'll tell you the story of the jumpsuit. So um, back in the day, my massive tool, my tool so having a contribution to the community was through charity work. So I was organizing a fashion show for charity um, with a charity shop. So I was kind of collating fashions from all the different parts of history to create this fantastic event to raise money for charity. And at the end of the event, I bought this beautiful piece that was part of the fashion show. And obviously it was already owned by someone. It had a lifetime before I got it, but I've had it for eight years and it's brought me a huge amount of joy. It's uh, my iconic piece <laughs> that I, I love to say I've got a committed relationship with. And that's kind of why I love it. Something that's already had a life. It's definitely then been able to fuel raising funds for charity, but then also come back and given me so much fun. And even though I've had it for eight years, I may have it for eight more, I may, I may even revamp it because after all I have to maintain it by sewing it and keeping all the seams neat so maybe I'll make it into a new, a new complete fashion item so it might no longer be a jumpsuit it may be a, a trouser you know crop top look who knows <laughs> what I'll be inspired <laughs> to do and you'll just keep getting a new lease of life and I kind of love that element of the circle economy the fact that you can keep using things repurposing them and can keep 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 growing and giving so many people joy and happiness so that's why I love this piece and that's why I'm using it today because it's just so beautiful and it makes me very very happy. <laughs> lovely, <laughs> lovely example and definitely in theme for you know we, we talked about our um, our next kind of group of these chats are going to be also on fashion as well mm. so and really nice example there and I think really almost the opposite of what Plastic Free Cavisham you know the, the plastic free stuff or the disposable plastic movement is about really short-term elements that will throw away culture where that piece of that long-lasting part and history of you as well. So very yeah. nice. Um, we'll have to see you in it one day as well. <laughs> That's what I want it, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Anne-Marie, what, what uh, did you bring with you today? Okay, so I brought, it's a bit more prosaic and banal than I was lovely dress. Um, it's basically just my favourite at the moment um lush this shampoo bar right it's shampoo bar and then i've got my conditioner which is it's basically aloe vera it's one of it's just like from the plant the aloe vera plant and the reason i brought these is just because when i was trying to look for ways to reduce my own personal plastic footprint um i could get everything you can get soap 
replacing all those little dispensers and shower gels and whatever. Soap does the job, loads of lovely soaps like that. But the, the shampoo was the tricky one to try and find, because we go through so many tons of bottles of shampoo that is literally a single use item. So when my daughter, she introduced me to the Lush, because I've never used Lush products before, I was so thrilled. But I also was, I brought that also to demonstrate that this is where I am headed, the direction that I'm, I'm going now, because within my eco hub, I call it that instead of a shop, because a shop sounds boring, but my, my shop is a shop, it's a space. I've now um, partnered with a company who make these um, shampoos and conditioners. <clears throat> they, they, they produce these canisters, but you know, that's just if someone wants to buy them, people can just bring something and refill themselves. So I'll finish my Lush bar and then hopefully when my partners have, they've just finalized the production of an amazing shampoo and, and soap. So um, that's very exciting for me because this is going to be part of the Frangipani home brand is refill, refill, refill. And this is all about the circular economy because what we're having to do is stop the, the production of plastic at its source and then really champion and support businesses that have a model where it's sort of, you know, the, the, the products they're producing are sustainable in that, you know, they can be reused or refilled. So our focus for Plastic Free Cabbage Show is, is about reusing, repairing, refilling, even before recycling. So, and that's my aloe vera plant, because actually that's a good tip for anyone. Instead of buying conditioner, I just use pure aloe vera, right? It's just like you can get this from, um, from Mood Skin, who are my partners who, who produce it. Just a pure product on your hair is as good as any conditioner. Um, and then keeping a plant handy is also useful in case you burn your finger on it, cooking or whatever. <laughs> what, what, how do you actually do that with the aloe vera plant? You just, I've never used well, it uh, directly. <laughs> you just break it open and squeeze the gels. Okay, so like you get a burn, down. yeah, or sunburn and you just sort of um, put it on. But for the conditioning, for conditioning your hair, you really need to have it, uh, you know, properly processed so that it's, it's a lot of liquid that you can place on your hair and just leave it on like a mask. But aloe vera is amazing. I, I used to live in Africa in countries where it just grew wild everywhere and in the gardens it was a very useful um, plant to have around. It's basically in hot countries but you get yeah. I think you touched I suppose on on some of those examples of, of the lush, the, the, the plastic free kind of the bar and, and the reusable refill bottle on I suppose potentially some of your your instigate or your journey to to really setting up um plastic free Cavisham could you go back and tell us a little bit of the story of of you know what really instigated you and then how I suppose with, with IO you, you've kind of got it got it going for sure yeah so um so my business um takes me to Bali Indonesia um, to source my products. The products that I source there are all sustainably made um, and they're made from natural materials uh, that are like, you know, that regenerate quickly like bamboo and rattan. Um, so I often go there and I, I'm very influenced by the Balinese philosophy, which is, it's almost like an animist. There's an animist element to it. So they are very very much focused on showing respect for the environment. They, they can't do anything that is not sustainable because it's ingrained in, in, in a lot of indigenous people around the world, not just the Balinese, that we have to respect the environment because we're connected to it. We're all one. It's the idea of the, the anime mundi. So I was very influenced by that and I was also noticing on my travels there, even in the most beautiful parts of the island where you go inland and there's rice terraces and it's lush and green, there's plastic everywhere. And, and it's such an abomination when you see these beautiful nature reserves around the world and it's, it's littered with plastic, the rice terraces, the rice fields, plastic bags, and the culprits of big culprits, the Coca-Cola, the Coca-Cola, 
plastic bottles everywhere. Um, and um, But then I would notice products, for example, which were not made in Bali, but maybe like a tub of Flora magazine, which really surprised me. It's like, what? And I didn't realize <clears throat> It wasn't until I started to investigate a bit more. Um, I had lived abroad for a long time, and I always thought that in the UK, we got recycling down to fine art and that everything was processed perfectly well and that we were took responsibility for it. When I discovered actually that we're producing so much plastic that it's actually, we can't process it. We can't take responsibility for it. And it was being shipped off to well initially China and then China decided not to take it anymore places like Indonesia and Malaysia poorer countries that needed money were taking on this task of you know processing our plastic waste and couldn't cope with it so it's leaking into their environment into the sea into the ocean so it was it seemed such a massive problem to me and it's such an abominable thing to happen obviously David Attenborough's um series was fantastic in raising awareness of what all that plastic in the ocean environment was actually doing. So that's kind of what inspired me to do something, you know, and, and also this Balinese philosophy is, you know, apart from just, you know, finding harmony with yourself and with others, finding harmony with nature is key. And every day you should do something for the environment as well as for other people and as well as for oneself. So for me, it was a no brainer. We have to take some action for the benefit of the, the marine life and the, the wildlife and the, and the, the suffering it's causing. Um, so that was why. And then I heard that um, Reading had declared a crisis emergency. I wrote to the council I wrote back immediately and I was very excited because she was absolutely over the moon. I just, we discovered too that already, I think the council had already passed the resolution to be a plastic free zone. And I was totally on this. She was sort of sought for it. So we, we just, this sort of synergy, this synergetic thing happened where we, we sort of got going. And um, yes, and unfortunately we've just been held up a bit as everyone else has with this um, crisis, but I'm so happy that you invited us today because it means we've <laughs> reconnected with light like minds and, you know, that sort of recharged our, our energy and enthusiasm a bit too. So yeah. thanks for having us. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so brilliant to have you on. So I, I could you explain a bit, I suppose, um, that the council sometimes a bit of a kind of mystical place for many of us <laughs> and what what your role there and the plastic kind of free um initiative I that the council had already done but also you know how collaboration with the community and, and people like Emily um, can, can really kind of help um, move things forward yeah so um obviously like you introduced me I'm a councillor I'm a councillor for Cabersham I'm Labour Cooperative so therefore I sit on Red and Borough Council um, and how the council works in its infrastructure, I guess, in its governance is it has, I guess, committees that run portfolios and organise everything that pertains to that issue. Um, but in June 2019, one of my council colleagues, um, Rachel Legion, wrote the motion and, you know, brought it to the council and it was voted through. And that kind of brought plastic to the heart of what we started doing as a council. We started putting, you know, sustainability at the heart of all our committee meetings, you know, what does this mean for the environment and putting in hot of our discussions. So when Anne-Marie contacted me, I think July, August, we, well, we met in August and this all started in August, our first steering group meeting, um, I was really keen. I'd been elected in May, I'd seen this motion and my background as a chartered civil engineer, but as someone who works with the environment agencies, very pro the environment and understands the importance of the environment in terms of social, economic and environmental, I was like, yes, we need to do this, but we need to do this with people. And I was keen to you know, create that synergy with Amory. It was so like-minded in terms of the passion to get this done. And that's the heart of what we do really. And the SAS toolkit has been a godsend because it breaks down the steps, it's measurable. And that is critical for what we're trying to achieve. You do need a baseline, you need things to work to, you need something you can achieve and that's proportionate to the area. So we started with Cavisham and we had Plastic Free Cavisham. We first had our meeting and we had our first mass unwrap as one of the SAS events with Waitrose who were really helpful. 
And we've gone on to do some other fantastic things like litter picking and really raising awareness, which is the heart of some of the stuff. But also starting to partner with businesses. I mean, Anne-Marie now partnering with Nude Skin and trying to get businesses on board. And that's that's part of the council's vision as well. We can't do this as a sole motion. It's not, it's not a static thing. It isn't just a policy thing. Policy needs action. It needs measurable, tangible outputs. And plastic recovery is one of those. It's been a part of the Reading Climate Change Strategy that just came out. We're on that. We're, we're one of the key critical steps for plastic reduction. So we have a little bit of pressure to deliver in somewhat because we are going to be the model about how you can deliver this with communities, bringing schools, colleges, university, community services, community organisations and just residents and people who are passionate about where they live to be allies and to sign the Plastic Free Communities Pledge and to help us get to our goal, which for a population like us in Caversham of 9,740 people, it's 15 allies, it's five businesses. So um, we have a, a, a way to go. We've we've had a hurdle with the pandemic having slowed down our actions, but this is a good opportunity for you to bring us here, for us to talk, and hopefully people to connect with us and join us in what we need to do, because we need you to do this. It's all about community partnership, and we need Plastic Free Cabersham to result in that, you know, that accreditation, to result in real action, because we aim following this to then have another area in Reading as accredited as plastic free also. That's the target for 2021, the last quarter in it, which as you see, we're in March, is not that far away. <laughs> so, um, you know, we need like a mind of you to work with us and to get that done. And I do believe that the best way to deliver this is with the community. I believe in co community focused delivery, um, being a cooperative council, that's kind of heart of the value system that people coming yeah. together empowered is the way real action happens. It's where we do like deliver local benefits. We build the leadership in the community and we also allow accountability to be um, more visible and transparent. So um, that's the vision is that we start with Cavisham. We drive to get those targets, get our allies, meet our requirements, get those community and businesses on board. And then we drive for another community in Reading to also follow the same pathway. Um, hopefully by the end of this year and we just keep amping that up year on year growing and growing till we have a whole reading that is completely SAS community accredited as single plastic free so that is the vision but it requires all of us to work together to make that happen and it's a big job that we have so um yeah that definitely requires you guys to message us <laughs> in the chat box get involved yeah, contact actually. our Facebook contact our Instagram please work with us Perfect. That was the question I was going to ask next, which was if people want to support, if businesses and community, and we've got representatives here or, or wider as well, what are those, those kind of actions that you really need um, you know, organisations to take, whether as a business to, to support um, getting SAS accreditation or, as you just mentioned there, I suppose getting, you know, become part of the group and the Facebook um, part as well. But for particularly businesses, what are the the things that they need to do potentially, or I, I think you mentioned schools as well, um, to support us with Caversham, first of all, getting that accreditation and then potentially wider. Yeah, um, so get in contact, like we'll, we'll help you, we'll show you the guidelines and what you need to do and how to sign up. Um, I think one of the first steps is starting with the small things, the easy things. I think often we all get carried away with the big agenda and it's overwhelming, but we have to pick a problem, a small problem and start with that. So for your business, what is the small change that you can make? Um, you know, we've seen other businesses do this already. Um, I'm sure Anne-Marie will go into this, you know, the flower shop and their change and also some of the changes that we still want to advocate for, like Claire from Nude Skin, um, we'll be talking about hopefully getting, you know, Chineses and like um, Indian takeouts to kind of go and ditch the single use plastic. Those are quite small changes, but they make such big mm. outcomes and they can have such huge um, repercussions for all of us and our environment. So that's kind of what we want to empower and help you to do. Um, first of all, sign up get on board with the toolkit, but then also take the steps to make the little changes first. We start with the easy ones, the, the low hanging fruit, and then we go from there and we build and we build and we, we get more and more changes and more and more culture changes and action changes and you know where we sourcing things as a business or et cetera to help us all achieve that goal, not just for us in Caversham, but Reading as a whole and to kind of achieve our, 
climate change strategy and our goals for 2020, but also into the future. Brilliant. Um, before I pass over to Sophie to see if there's any questions and we'll pick up in the chat, what I'd like to do is ask you both, and I think you, you both know quite a few interesting local businesses and organisations, because we always ask our guests to recommend someone or nominate um, an organisation or individual or campaign that we, Sophie and I, will try and reach out to and, and maybe get on like yourselves. <laughs> um, so, so first of all, I do have a local business or organisation that you know would be interesting to hear from. It doesn't necessarily have to be plastic free related, it could be any. <laughs> I will always recommend Nude Skin just because they've been such a model of putting sustainability in the heart of what they do. It isn't just plastic, it's everything they do for sourcing locally, bringing jobs locally. And I always think sustainability has to be talked about in the three pillars, the environmental, the economic and the social. And that's the heart of their business. They model that. So. <laughs> so to hear from them would be fantastic and to hear their vision um, apologies I've just perfect <laughs> I'll pass over to Anna and Marie do you have a recommended uh... I was just going to say it's skin too but um, oh she stole it <laughs> she stole it but anyway um likewise um I don't know true foods the cooperative is would I don't know if you've had guests from there but I think I'd be very interested to hear more from because they do the same thing and they're very much the, the the kind of business model that you know that we need to encourage and champion if we want to sort of you know tackle the the, the plastic problem um, and we just want to say that we do have a number of businesses already signed up mm -hmm. and committed maybe about 15 in Caversham actually that are committed to making the changes <laughs> yeah and the changes are simple they, they, they just need to be um, make a change um, three minimum of three things that are single use that are avoidable um, and replace that with a sustainable alternative. So the idea is that especially shops and cafes, restaurants, the idea being if you don't, you know, offer, you, you don't make it available, then people can't buy it and it's much easier to change the culture then these things are no longer available. But I think what you know other ways people can help is they can become um you know they can do um their own actions or they can set up a plastic free community in their own ward or their own area um the toolkit that comes from if you do it under the the um SAS scheme the toolkits are very very comprehensive user-friendly and as i has already said it's, it's everything is there for you so it's easy but it's just like, you know, getting the word out, making people aware that it's, it's, a, it's a behavioral change we, we need mm -hmm. to see happen. So we've just been a mass consumer in society, throw away society for too long. And I think it's coming home to people now that, yep, we need to do something. Um, and to be honest, what we found, I and I found was even just the initial, let's put this idea out there and see who in the community would like to see this reduction in plastic in supermarkets and shops. And, and it was a huge um, response. I mean, the appetite is there, I have no doubt whatsoever that the consumers, the people, the residents of Reading will be totally behind this, very much so. And the businesses, as I say, the businesses are very on board with it as well. So Yeah, I think what, what you say is really, um, true around you know there's a lot of toolkits there's a lot of really good step by step you know guides out there but it takes us as people like yourselves to to instigate and support people kind of finding them and actually actioning them as, mm, as exactly. well which is great to great to see um i'll just check in with sophie if there's any other questions popping up on the chat uh, I've been seeing yeah. quite a few popping up at the go. <laughs> yeah, we do have a careful exactly. I need to go back uh, onto the list. But yeah, no, thank you. It was super inspiring. I love about you know that journey basically, but also how you bring sort of joy and happiness into it. Because for me, there's a lot around changing the narrative. You know, we've all heard we need to change and so on. But if we just talk to the head, it's like, mm, so what? But when you really start having the joy and touching the heart, then all of a sudden you get the people more engaged and so on. <laughs> Super exciting. Um, so, yeah, there was one question around schools. So did you get much interest from schools? We have had some interest. And um, I was focusing on traders. We've got a steering group. Um, 
But there's the Hemdean High School, which I think is an independent school in Caversham, who's already signed up and made lots of changes. Um, so they're an ally. And um, was it you that told me, I think, Erica, that Leighton, Leighton, right, yeah. So what we really need to do is get more schools. I am under the impression that schools are all doing things under different schemes and mm -hmm. they're making their changes. And they're, I think there's um, eco schools uh, projects and I can't remember what they're called smart um plastic smart skills or something anyway they're doing things already so in order for us to get our accreditation as a community we need the schools just to sign up to the SAS scheme um and then just the certain um objectives that have to be met for the individual schools to get the accreditation the same as businesses yeah so they they this is just like five objectives that involves setting up trash mobs, having rallies, creating a sort of awareness around the community by having litter pits, things like that, mm -hmm. writing to MPs, you know, lobbying the yeah. government is key, as is the, the case for any individual that wants to take action <laughs> to reduce plastic, lobby the government. Right? Um, and someone asked just now, I think, where can you sign up to get the toolkit? So you can ask, I can happily send toolkits to anyone, Mm -hmm. Or go onto the SAS website, and if it's a plan, if you just want to sign up as an individual to do your own individual action, all the tabs are there. You can just choose whichever one. So it's, it's. Um, I don't know if you can. I don't know. Erica just put it in the yeah. chat, so it's there. You can put it in there. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah, so again, Serge. They've got all the toolkits for anyone that wants to join. Mm -hmm. We're focusing on, on Cavisham, but we're more than happy to join forces with anyone else in the rest of Reading. Yeah. Um, you know, I can share, Ayo and I can share everything with you, all our toolkits, all our posters, all the things, materials that we put together already. Why reinvent the wheel? You can always yeah, exactly. Let's uh, work really collaboratively cool. together. And so many people are doing such great things. So it's good to amplify that. Like yeah. I'm just getting emails from brownies. They're doing so much. Emails, oh, um, they be doing so much, which I'm impressed by considering everything's been virtual. So um, there is so much being done. It's just bringing it together under one banner and kind of accumulating all the benefits so that we can see that and, and get the accreditation, but also to give people that morale boost. The environmental challenges as described under the UN 17 goals and kind of all of the issues that we're seeing in the world can be overwhelming. So by breaking down to these, this one target at the moment for us, which is plastic free and bringing everyone together under one toolkit, or at least to get the accreditation under one toolkit, just shows us that we are making progress. It's good for our well-being. It's good for our sense of self. It's good for bringing communities together, empowering people, building skill sets. It's so much more um, when you're involved in it, so much to gain from it um, in terms of a sense that the world is a better place by your action. So that is basically the call to action that, you know, there is a lot going on in the world. They seem like there are a lot of overwhelming challenges, but when we come together as communities and to one vision, such as for us, plastic free um, status or plastic reduction, we can achieve something great and we can make the world a better place and we can kind of come back nihilism in the sense of, everything's bigger than us and we can't make a difference and we can still all together lobby the systems that still need to change right to the MPs right to Unilever mm. and put pressure so that the cycle where it starts where things are produced what packaging is put out is is revamped and we have a better outcome so that it's easier for all of us in our society and our objectives are achieved and we have just a better world where you know we can go to Bali and we don't see plastic everywhere mm. and we kind of come back to what I think is uh, an unsp underspoken topic about the environmental injustice of it all, where we consume so much in this developed nation, but actually those who bear the brunt of our excess consumerism and the consequences of our packaging are far away in the world in developing nations and do not get to reap the benefits of it. So we also get to take that collective responsibility and address some larger social issues, which I mean, isn't that, isn't that a gift? Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. There were a couple of other smaller questions. What I can do is maybe ask them to you after, if you don't mind, and we can just feed that back on that. But we're getting towards the end. It's always the challenge to finish on time. So, <laughs> so I want to say thank you so much, you and Mariana, your, like your you know, energy and enthusiasm just been absolutely fantastic. Um, just so that you know, next, so in two weeks' time, not next week, two weeks' time, on the 25th of March, we're having the last circular coffee conversation around food, drink, and packaging. 
And it's actually going to be a circular beer conversation in the evening <laughs> at 6.30. We are being joined by um, the founder from Toast Ale and they make beer out of uh, bread that was going to go to waste from supermarkets. Um, and there's also, they've very kindly given us um, a discount on their beer. So if we want, we could all have one and cheer, you know, yeah. <laughs> on our conversation as well. So I'll send you the details, we'll send you the details like in the next couple of days so that if you'd like to order some, you've got the lead time so <laughs> we can do that. But uh, a massive, massive thank you uh, to you both and Maria and Ayo. It's been a super inspiring conversation. Have a lovely day, everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for you that. for having us. Thank yeah, you. Oh, bye. 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 bye.